Hi, I am Dr. Arvind Kidambi Sheshatri, Consultant HPB Surgery and Liver Transplant, Manipal Hospitals. Hi, today I will be telling you about who needs a transplant or when we advise transplant as a treatment for a patient who has liver disease. So basically somebody who has a compensated liver disease, the risk to life is less than 10% over a period of one year. So when a patient develops decompensation, this is the time when the patient needs to consider liver transplant seriously as a treatment option. So what we look at is whether the transplant is indicated in the patient. So when the risk of uh, dying with uh, without transplant is more than the risk of dying with transplant meaning somebody who is on a medical management if the survival rate is less than 90 percent then uh, over a period of one year then we advise a liver transplant because the risk to life uh, perioperative risk to life while undergoing a liver transplant is around 5 to 10 percent which is less compared to the risk to life of somebody who is having a decompensated liver disease and is on medical management. So how do we stratify this risk or how do we calculate the risk? There are various scores that are available. You can go through the internet or google it. There is something very uh, called a child uh, turquoise pug score which, are, which is a very simple uh, score but it has a good prognostic value. So this has five parameters. It looks at uh, bilirubin, looks at albumin, INR, whether the person has ascites or, and it looks at encephalopathy and it is uh, scored from 1 to 3 depending on the severity. So there are three categories there is, which is uh, A, B and C. A is early, B is moderate and C is severe. So in terms of scoring if somebody has a child score of 7 or more then we advise them to consider uh, a liver transplant as a treatment option. Uh, uh, there is also another uh, uh, score which is more accurate and is being uh, used quite frequently which is called the MELD or the MELD sodium. So this is model for end stage liver disease and it also has uh, 3 to 4 parameters, the melt sodium has 4 parameters. It looks at uh, bilirubin, INR, uh, sodium and creatinine and uh, uh, based on a statistical model a score is uh, generated, uh, the calculator is available freely on the net. So somebody who has, has got a normal liver function will have a MELD score of say 6 and uh, suppose the MELD score is 14 or above. Uh, this is when we advise the patient to consider a liver transplant and uh, get worked up for it. Because a MELD score of 14 or above indicates a risk to life of around 10 to 15 percent over a period of next three months. And the risk of a liver transplant uh, is only 5 to 10 percent in the perioperative period. So when the risk of a liver transplant outweighs the risk of not having a liver transplant and being in medical management is when we suggest a transplant. And uh, all these patients who are on medical management and are decompensated, uh, the long term survival say 3 years or 5 years is almost zero. And with a liver transplant, the 5 year survival rate is in the range of 80 to 85 percent. And this uh, 10 to 15 percent mortality includes all cause mortality, not only uh, mortality related to the graft liver or the transplant surgery, this includes all other organ uh, system related mortality. So, essentially, what I am uh, wanting to say is if if a patient is looking for a long term survival, say 5, 10, 15 or 20 years, liver transplant is the only treatment option that will give you, the, uh, give you this long term survival. Uh, because as of now, there is no medical treatment that can uh, give you a long term survival or reverse the process that is happening in the liver. So once the liver is damaged, the patient has decompensation. Child score is 
seven, eight or above, and the bend score when calculated is fourteen or above. Uh, this is the right time when they con- uh, when the patient should consider uh, a liver transplant and uh, go for the same. So, in our experience, uh, we have transplanted children who have uh, grown up, have entered college, gotten married. They have a children. There are various examples like the uh, child who was transplanted in. Uh, I mean, it's not in India, but who was transplanted in the United Kingdom at the age of five years is now 50 years old, and she has grandchildren. So there are various examples like this. There is even sports persons who have undergone a liver transplant come back after the transplant, recovered, and have gone on to play for the country. so uh, what i would like to say is if somebody is looking for a long term survival and good quality of life then liver transplant is the answer especially after uh, the person has developed a reasonable decompensation and the bell score is uh, 14 or above so once the indication for a liver transplant is clear we need to tell the recipient and the family regarding a liver transplant and counsel them so it is not a very easy decision because of a few reasons one it's a major undertaking a vital organ is being replaced the risk of liver transplant entails is in the range of 5 to 10% whereas a, a routine cardiac surgery the risk involved is 0.1 to 1% uh, so the next reason for this is the finances that is involved because uh, compared to the other treatments that is available the cost of a liver transplant is a bit more so the family also needs to look into this and three what are the options that are available to undergo a liver transplant so once the indication becomes clear we tell, we tell the patient and the family that uh, the indication is quite clear that you will benefit by undergoing a liver transplant uh, because this will give you a good quality of life a better quality of life and long term survival so once the indication is clear then we ask the family what type of treatment they want or what they are what option they are looking for so if they are okay with the transplant the next uh, decision is from the family side if they are okay for a transplant then there are two options uh, one is a living donor liver transplant and the other one is a cadaveric liver transplant in a living donor liver transplant a uh, person who is a part of the family voluntarily agrees to donate a part of his or her liver which could be a right lobe or a left lobe uh, uh, for the recipient to undergo a transplant in a disease donor transplant the organ is uh, got from a person who is either brain dead and the uh, patient's family decides to donate the organs or it can be also retrieved from a patient who has undergone a cardiac death so what are the risks and what are the advantages of uh, both of this once the patient and the family decide on undergoing a liver transplant the what are the options that they have they either have to uh, go for a living donor liver transplant or a cadaveric liver transplant so there are uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, both these options in a living donor liver transplant uh, they need to have a donor in the family meaning somebody who is related has to come come up voluntarily the blood group should be compatible they should be between the age of 18 to 50 rarely we have taken donors up to 55 years of age but that is only when they are very fit and on evaluation everything is okay and uh, blood group compatible so a part of his or her liver will be uh, taken up for uh, transplant in the potential recipient so the advantage of this is we have a good quality of liver the timing can be controlled somebody needs an urgent transplant or somebody who is having an acute liver failure and the transplant needs to be done within the next 12 24 hours then uh, this is the best option the quality of the liver is quite good because we have already evaluated for it and uh, 
the disadvantage of this is the donor has to undergo a major surgical undertaking though the person is normal he will be subjected to a surgery uh, there will be a cut on the tummy and though the safety uh, measures and all the procedures have been standardized there have been a lot of adva- advancements and uh, developments there is a small risk that is associated with this procedure which is in the range of 0.1 to 0.5% and uh, coming to the next option which is a disease donor transplant the advantages are there is no need to identify any donor in the family because the uh, donor who is going to donate his or her organs is already brain dead or could be because of a, a cardiac death so the donor risk is completely zero uh, the disadvantage is the timing we don't know when a donation is going to happen and the third thing is we don't have a control of the quality of liver because whatever liver is being offered is the one that we are going to use if it is suitable so the the third thing that is going to come into the picture is the finances uh, unfortunately compared to all other treatments this is a bit expensive but still it is one fourth or one fifth the price uh, compared to western countries uh, the living donor liver transplant costs a bit less compared to a disease donor uh, transplant because in a disease donor transplant the consumables that are consumed the perfusion solution are a bit expensive there is a brief period of time where we need to use some medicines to manage the donor and there is a small fee that we pay pay to the government organization which facilitates the whole process the living donor liver transplant is uh, less expensive compared to the disease donor program it includes the cost for both the donor and the recipient and uh, it covers their uh, surgery the investigations hospital and the icu stay uh, one one to one week to 10 days for the donor and three to four weeks for the recipient so this is how we counsel the family uh, briefly we tell them that the indication is quite clear and they will benefit from a transplant good quality of life and long term survival is possible with this treatment and uh, it is quite safe to perform and uh, a uh, good uh, experience and expertise is available then we allow the uh, family to make the decision once they decide we give them the option of either going for a living donor liver transplant or a disease donor uh, transplant we work them up for the same and register and uh, if they are able to uh, get an organ on, while waiting on the uh, list then the i mean that is the best thing that could happen to the patient but while waiting if they are deteriorating we tell them to uh, proceed with living donor liver transplantation and uh, like i said before if everything goes well apart from the 5 to 10% risk long term survival uh, off late is, uh, uh, is more likely possible than uh, what it was 10 15 years ago